Hello and welcome back to Math 301, Combinatorics at CSU. Today we're going to be continuing Chapter 1 talking about factorials. So last time we talked about triangular numbers, which were the sum of the numbers from 1 up to some number n, and factorials are the product of the numbers from 1 up to n. They are an extremely useful tool in mathematics, in combinatorics in particular, and we're going to be seeing a lot more applications of factorials later in the course. But now we're just going to start with some big overview of where factorials appear, what you can do with them, um, why they're important. So one big place they come up is in arranging things in order. For instance, how many ways can we rearrange the letters in the word cat? So some people would call this forming an anagram of the letters in cat. Well, let's start by figuring out what the first letter might be. Well, there's three ways of choosing the first letter. You can either start with C, A, or T. Once you choose that letter, though, there's more possibilities for what can come after it. After C, you can either follow up with A or T. That's two possibilities there. After A, you can either follow up with C or T. And after T, you can follow up with either um, C or A. So there's actually two possibilities for each first letter as to what the second letter is going to be. And then from there, there's only one possibility left for the last letter because there's only one letter left. So we just fill in after CA, you have to put T, that's cat, but then you can get CTA or ACT or ATC or TCA or TAC. And those are all the ways of rearranging the letters C, A, and T in order. And we see that there are six of them if you just count them. But of course, in combinatorics, we don't want to just count things directly. We want fast ways of computing these things. And the fast way in this case is to say, well, there's three possibilities for the first letter. And then there's three, poss three times two possibilities for the first two letters. And finally, three times two times one to, in order to put all the letters down in some order. And three times two times one is six. That's an example of a factorial. It's the product of all the numbers from one to three. And this saves us a lot of work when the numbers start getting bigger. For instance, say we want to rearrange all the letters in a four letter word like math. So there are now four letters. So there's four ways of choosing the first letter. And then after that, there's three possibilities for each starting letter as to what the second letter is going to be because there are three letters remaining. M can go with A, T, or H. And then there are two possibilities for each of those letters after that for the third letter, M-A-T or M-A-H, M-T-A or M-T-H, and so on. And finally, then one possibility for how to put the last letter down. And so altogether, there are four times three times two times one, or 24 possible ways of rearranging the letters in the word math. So that saves us a lot of work, and it's so important that we make its own symbol for a factorial. So we define n factorial, written n with an exclamation point, we pronounce that n factorial, to be the product of the numbers from n down to 1. So the theorem is that there are n factorial ways to arrange n things in order. An example is computing 4 factorial is the product of the numbers 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and that's 24 like we saw above. So, um, the, so in general, the number of ways of rearranging n things is n factorial. Now there's lots of different applications of this formula. Um, you can solve variants of this problem, such as say we only wanted to take two letters from math and make a two letter word, like ma or at or HA. Um, well, there's four ways of choosing the first letter and three ways of choosing the second letter, so there's just 12 ways in that case. In general, we can answer this question in general. How many ways can we make a little k-letter word from, formed from choosing k-distinct letters chosen from n letters? So in the math case, we had four letters and we chose two. Now we have n and we're choosing k. Well, here there's n ways to choose the first letter and then n minus one for the second and n minus two for the third down to n minus k plus 1 for the kth. If we, if we make the last one n minus k plus 1, you can see that guarantees there's k factors. That's exactly how many we need. And the product of these can be written in terms of factorials. Notice that this can be thought of as the product of all the numbers from n down to 1, where we divide out by the stuff that we don't have, which is the product of all the numbers from n minus k down to 1. And so it's really just a ratio of two factorials. We get this nice compact formula for this combinatorial question in terms of factorials. n factorial divided by n minus k factorial is the number of ways of making these shorter words from a longer word. 
And this leads us to one of the most important formulas in mathematics. And again, we'll see the binomial coefficients a lot more down the road in this course. But just as a quick introduction, we write the symbol n above a k with parentheses to mean n choose k. That's how we pronounce it. And it's defined to be the number of ways to choose k things from n things, not necessarily in order, not making a word out of it, just pick k things out of n things. For instance, what if we wanted to say, how many ways can we choose two of the letters of math to color red? I'm going to color A and T red, or maybe I'll color A and H red. Well, now it doesn't matter the order in which we chose them. And, um, and so it's a little bit different of a problem than we solved before. So just to note, in this case, how would we write this as a binomial coefficient problem? Well, it's four choose two, because we're choosing two of the letters out of four of the letters. And the question is, how do we compute four choose two? Let's go back to that chart with math that we had before. It's tempting to say that it's the number of uh, possibilities in the second column here, because that's two of the letters, but notice they're ordered. So I, I counted some things twice. You know, I don't want to put them in order. I just want to say, how can I pick an A and an M? Well, I had MA and AM both in this sequence. So really, the set of letters M and A, the pair that I'm going to color red, is counted twice. In fact, every pair is counted exactly twice. So I have 4 times 3 things in this column. That's 12. I divide 12 by 2 to get 6 possibilities for just how many ways can we choose two of the letters with no particular order. And so this trick of dividing to get 6 in this case um, for 4 choose 2 can be generalized to give the formula for a general n choose k symbol. So the theorem of this n choose k, the number of ways of choosing k things from n things, is n factorial divided by k factorial times n minus k factorial. And the reasoning is the same as above. There's n factorial divided by n minus k factorial ways to choose k things and put them in order to make a word. But then each of those collections that we're trying to count of k things is counted k factorial times. We don't want to count the order. We've overcounted them by a factor of k factorial. And what that means is we can take this formula we already had, n factorial divided by n minus k factorial, and divide it by k factorial, just like we divided by 2 in the math case, because 2 is 2 factorial. That's where that's coming from. And so we can now, when we divide, just put everything in the denominator that we're dividing by, and we get this formula, n factorial over k factorial, n minus k factorial. Let's use this in an example. Five people walk into the room. Everybody shakes hands with everyone else. How many handshakes occurred? If you watched the previous video, this might sound familiar. We solved it using the triangular numbers formula before, using Gauss's formula. And now we're going to solve it using binomial coefficients, which are these choose formulas that we just came up with. So in this case, we have five people, and we want to choose two of them to shake hands. The number of ways of choosing two people to shake hands is the number of handshakes. So we can write this problem as five choose two. And now let's remember our formula. n choose k is n factorial divided by k factorial times n minus k factorial. And we're plugging in n equals 5 and k equals 2 into this formula. So we get 5 factorial divided by 2 factorial, and then 5 minus 2 is 3, so we get 3 factorial. Now let's talk a little bit about how we simplify things like this, because it's tempting to just calculate 5 factorial, calculate 2 factorial, calculate 3 factorial, and divide. Um, but you can often divide before you multiply, and that saves you a lot of work. For instance, here, if we write out these factorials, notice the, the 3 times 2 times 1 cancels with the 3 times 2 times 1 above it. So we have a lot less multiplication to do in the end. And the 2 even cancels with the 4 and gives you a 2 upstairs. And so we get 5 times 2, and that's 10. And that's the answer to the handshake problem that we got last time using the triangular numbers. It's just a different method of computing it. So you see how useful this binomial coefficient formula is. We can choose two things or three things. It generalizes this handshake problem in a way we didn't have before. Here's another fun example. Say you're playing the game Mafia, and say 11 people are playing it. One's the narrator. And to start the game, he has to choose four of the 10 other people to be the Mafia. So how many ways can you choose which four of the 10 people are Mafia? Now, this is a lot of possibilities to count. We'll see how large this is if we compute 10 choose 4 here. 10 choose 4, again plugging into the formula, is 10 factorial divided by 4 factorial times 10 minus 4 factorial, which is 6 factorial. And again, let's cancel before we multiply. Let's write this out as 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 3 times 4 times 2 times 1. 
I'm just going to bundle all that up as six exclamation points, six factorial. And then on the bottom, we have four times three times two times one and six factorial. The six factorials then cancel. That's the advantage of writing them that way. Then we can even cancel some more things here. The four and the two multiply together to give you the eight. So the four and the two cancel with the eight. Also, the, the three even cancels with part of the nine and gives you three left over here in the product. And then uh, we have a seven left over. So 10 times three times seven is 10 times 21, which is 210. That's a lot of ways of choosing the mafia team. And now it's your turn. So your problem for the day, along with some other quiz questions in the quiz, is in a classroom of 20 students, how many ways can you pick a pair of them to present the next day? So we have presentations in this class, and this is a good, fun question for you to try. So that's a little summary of where factorials and binomial coefficients come up in combinatorics. We're going to see a lot more of these in the future classes. And for now, we'll see you next time.